A Midsummer Night's Dream. Once upon a time, when people used to get lost in the woods very conveniently, or so as a lot of stories have told us, Duke Richard of Athens was preparing for his marriage with the Queen of Amazon, Barbara, with a four-day festival of pomp and entertainment. He was interrupted by a courtier, David. I need your guidance and help. Not now, David. I am a little busy here. Come back next year. Next year, I have an emergency. My daughter here, Donna, is in love with this man, Anthony. But I want her to get married to Christopher here. Is it correct, Donna? Yes, Your Majesty. I love Anthony. Besides, he has a great sense of fashion and appreciates my beauty all the time. <laughs> Your nail polish looks so good. <laughs> oh, my... God, I know, right? Donna, I like your nail polish, too. Shut up, Christopher. Yeah, shut up, Christopher. Donna, it is the law of Athens. You must either get married to the man your father has chosen for you, or else accept a celibate life as a nun in Diana's temple. What? Donna was shocked to hear that, but nodded. Her best friend, Emily, who was madly in love with Christopher. Oh, Christopher. It means you and I can be... Never. Oh, please. A happy David left with his daughter, unaware that that night, Donna and Anthony had planned to elope. Donna had shared the secret with Emily before, leaving from Athens that night with Anthony. I can't believe we are running away. Hey, you want a race? What? To the woods. Ready, steady, go. Wait, Anthony! Ah! Back at Athens, Emily tried to persuade Christopher relentlessly. You will never find someone like me. That is exactly the point. Ah, for God's sake, Christopher. Donna is gone. What do you mean? Emily told Christopher everything, and he was furious. Determined, he set off at once to find Donna and bring her back. No, wait, I can't let you leave. Emily went after Christopher in the hope that he will give up on Donna and choose her instead. Now, in the woods, unbeknownst to many, there lived a group of fairies unlike any other. Oberon, king of the fairies, had recently quarreled with his queen, Tina. She had acquired a magical child from one of her waiting women and now refused to hand him over to Oberon to use as a page. I am asking you one last time, woman. Give me the magical boy. Talk to my hand. Ah, I will teach you a lesson, wife. King Oberon began to plot a way to get revenge on Tina for her disobedience, and so he called upon his favorite fairy servant, Puck. King Oberon, you are the greatest king ever. Your courage and strength. Save it, Puck. I have no time for this. I want you to fetch this purple flower with juice that makes people fall in love with the first creature they see after they wake up. I am going to use it on Tina and make her fall in love with a vile creature. <laughs> that sounds so evil. I am not even, um, on it, my king. And so, Puck went to find the purple flower. Now, I will teach you a lesson you will never forget, Tina. Wait, who are those people? Just leave me alone. But I love you. Emily, look at the stars and count them. That's how much... I love you back. But it's morning. Exactly. Hey! As Emily followed Christopher deep into the woods, King Oberon got an idea. My king, here is the flower. Thank you, Puck. Now, there is an Athenian who acted very cruelly towards a girl. They have gone that way. Go there at night and spread some of the juice on the eyelids of the young Athenian man. When he wakes up and sees the girl, he will fall in love with her. 
Aw, you're such a cutie sometimes. <sighs> Never call me a cutie again. Um, sorry. Now, it so happened that when Puck went deep inside the woods, he saw an Athenian man and woman sleep separately under two different trees. The problem is, they were Donna and Anthony. Ah, it's time for some love juice. <laughs> and so, Puck afflicts Anthony with the love potion. And as if the situation was not boisterous already, Emily walked in to find Anthony sleeping. Anthony, wake up! Have you seen Christopher? He ran away from me. Anthony woke up to see Emily and fell deeply in love with her. Whoa, forget Christopher. I love you, Emily. What? What? What changed after we went to sleep? Oh, you keep quiet, woman. My love for Emily is true. She is so pretty. Stop making fun of me. Emily, wait. Anthony. I saw everything. Huh? King Oberon? Um, um, you're the greatest king ever? Your courage and strength. Save it and go fix the situation. Um, yes. As the tremulous night progressed, Puck attempted to undo his mistake. Ah, there is the Athenian that I had to rub the juice on. Here you go. All done and fixed. Now I just have to wait for the girl to show up. Stop following me. Get away. Never. I love you more than anything. What about me? Huh? Hmm? Emily! Huh? Emily, you are so beautiful. I love you so much. Hey, get away from her. She is mine. In your dreams, Emily. Come with me, you beautiful you. Stop it, you both. Stop making fun of me. Emily. Emily. Anthony. And thus began a wild ride. Anthony and Christopher, under the spell of the flower juice, pursue Emily. Stop it. I know I'm not beautiful, and that's why you guys are making fun of me. Go away! Donna, meanwhile, was jealous, but more confused about the lack of attention paid to her. What is happening? Anthony, give me attention. Look at my nail polish. Anthony! Emily! Emily! Oh, no. What have I done? What have you done? Um, King Oberon, you are the greatest king ever. Your courage and strength. Shut up, Puck. This madness must end. I command you to put things right again. I will not give another chance. Y yes, yes, your highness. Puck follows the four amidst the chaos and confusion. Finally, when the four were exhausted from running around, they pass out. That's when Puck makes his move. He puts restorative juice on Anthony and Christopher's eyes, and then he places a spell on all the four so that when they wake up, they feel it was all a dream. Morning came, and Duke Richard and Queen Barbara, who were at the woods for a hunting party, saw the four on the ground sleeping. Donna's father was also there. What are these guys doing here? Donna, why aren't you home? Donna told her father how she eloped with Anthony, but doesn't remember what happened after that. Father, I'm so sorry. I would rather die than marry any other man. Kill me, father, for this life is not worth it if Anthony is not beside me. And I would give my life along with her, for she is my life's purpose. Christopher, who heard it all, realized how he was foolish to come to the woods chasing Donna. He walked up to David. David, I know you want Donna to marry me, but what good will it do to the both of us when there is no love? 
you should give a hand to Anthony. Besides, I think I have someone who loves me with all her heart. I was foolish to look for love elsewhere. Emily, will you marry me? <laughs> oh, Christopher, yes. Well, who are we to stand in between true love? What do you say, David? Indeed! And so, on the same day, Emily married Christopher and Donna married Anthony. Everyone was happy. But wait, what about King Oberon, you ask? King Oberon, you are the greatest king ever. Come to the point, Puck. I handled the situation. Everything is fine. Even better. I know. I am the fairy king, remember? Indeed. Here is the purple flower. Throw it away. I don't need it. I have seen the chaos it can create. My arrogance made me want to take revenge from my own wife. Arrogance is used by the weak. And King Oberon isn't weak. You are right. In fact, you are the greatest king ever. King Oberon went to his wife and apologized. You do not want the magical boy anymore? No, my love. And I think you shouldn't keep him either. He should go back to his real mother. My goodness! My husband has really changed. The magical boy is with his mother. I never brought him here. I was just playing with you. I wanted to see how far your arrogance takes you. What? You fooled me? <laughs> More like taught you a lesson. <laughs> I am glad, my love. And thus, love ultimately conquered all odds naturally. Everyone was happy. Like Shakespeare once said, all's well that ends well. <laughs>